Hi folks, welcome to Intro to Chemistry Part 5. In this mini lecture, we're going to talk about when molecules have poles or polarity and what the heck a hydrogen bond is and what, how is it different than a bond between oxygen and hydrogen, for example. All right, so last lecture we talked about covalent bonds. Covalent. So these are bonds that form when electrons are shared between, the valence electrons are shared between different atoms. Some bonds are called nonpolar. And what that means is that all of the electrons are shared equally in the atoms participating in a bond. So that example, the end of last lecture, methane, right? So here's a modified Bohr diagram of methane or CH4. Over here we have um, a ball and stick model of methane where we've got the carbon in the center and then the four hydrogens organized around it. Now, if you, if you think about it, you might think, well, hydrogen's only got one proton, carbon's got six, so how come the hydrogen electron isn't held more closely to the carbon? And the answer to that is that essentially think of, this is the best analogy I can give you, think of the carbon as being like um, a wagon. Okay, um, and the hydrogens are like four horses that are hooked up to the four sides of the wagon. Well, if they're all pulling at the same time, the wagon's not going to go anywhere. And so the electrons are going to be shared equally because this hydrogen and this hydrogen are pulling in opposite directions, and so this hydrogen and this hydrogen are pulling opposite one another. So you end up with a symmetrical molecule where it is the same all the way around, and the electrons are shared. Molecules that are nonpolar don't dissolve in water. Another way of saying that is to say that they are hydrophobic. And we'll talk a lot more about hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules um, when we talk about cell membranes. All right, so nonpolar molecules, electrons are shared equally. Now, when you have polar covalent bonds, the electrons aren't shared equally. And that's because some atoms have much more pulling power. So the nucleus of a fluorine atom has nine protons in this example, right? So I've got nine protons. The hydrogen has just got a single proton. Remember that all electrons are attracted to all protons and vice versa. So where are the electrons going to spend the most time? They are going to spend it close to the fluorine. Atoms that have a lot of this pulling power are called electronegative. You don't really need to remember that for this class, but if having a word for that enhanced pulling power is useful, then electronegativity is it. Um, Right? We're not going to be able to remove that electron completely from hydrogen because then you'd have a naked proton sitting out there um, and it would require a lot of energy. But it is definitely the case that the electrons will spend more time around the fluorine. And so we say that this is a the hydrogen fluorine bond is a polar covalent bond. 
polar covalent bonds, any molecule with polar covalent bonds dissolves in water because water, it turns out, is polar, and they're called hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water-loving. Philia means love. Okay, so here's a water molecule, H2O. That's the formula, chemical formula for water. And it has, the water molecule has two, two oxygen, hydrogen, polar covalent bonds. And whenever you have a polar covalent bond, that results in something incredibly important for living systems. You end up with a molecule where you have some areas that have a partial charge, partial positive, partial negative charge. In the case of water, we've got two areas that are partially positive around the two hydrogen nuclei and two areas around the nucleus, <coughs> excuse me, of the oxygen that are partially negative. So, as I said, water molecules are polar. And that's because oxygen is more electronegative. It has more pulling power, more protons than hydrogen. And so that positively charged oxygen nucleus is able to pull harder on the shared electrons than hydrogen does. Now, to show the partial charge, you use a lowercase Greek letter, which I have a hard time writing, called delta. Um, but lowercase delta, it's like a little weird squiggly thing. And that symbol means partial, and then you have a partial negative. Right? So you've got two areas of partial negative charge and two areas of partial positive charge. So who cares? Why do we care? that water is uh, polar, that it has polarity. Well, first thing I want to point out is that, you know, because you don't get shocked when you step into the shower, that overall water molecules are electrically neutral. So you have the same number in the molecule, you have the same number of protons and electrons, but within the water molecule, there are these partially positive and negative areas. So, so far we've talked about ionic bonds and two different kinds of covalent bonds. Nonpolar, where the electrons are shared equally, and polar covalent bonds, where they're shared unequally. The unequal sharing that you have with polar covalent bonds leads to another kind of interaction. But this is an interaction that takes place between molecules. These are intermolecular forces. Intra, which is how I describe an intramolecular force, is a force that acts within molecules. The prefix inter means between. So these are forces that act between molecules or between different parts of a huge molecule, like a protein. So why do we care? Well, 70% of you by mass is water. So water is an incredibly, incredibly important um, part of the chemistry of our cells. So next, I'm going to show you part of a video clip um, to hopefully try to convince you that water is made of molecules with partial charge. Um, I highly recommend trying this yourself. Um, how to win friends and influence people, or win money and bars, in my case. <laughs> Tell people you can bend water without touching it.
So for this demonstration, you're only going to need three things. A tap or some sort of running water. I'm using a bottle with a small hole cut in the bottom. This allows the water to drizzle at a slow and steady speed. The next thing you're going to need is some sort of material that will allow you to generate a static charge. A towel should do the trick. Now we're going to use a PVC pipe. If you don't have a pipe, a plastic pen works just as well. Rub the pipe on the towel to build up the static charge. Now that the pipe's charged with static electricity, move it close to the water and you'll notice the water bends towards the pipe. Nice! What's happening here is the water molecules are actually twisting around depending whether the pipe's positively or negatively charged. Let's say the pipe's negatively charged. The water molecule will spin around so the positive side is attracted to the negative charge. This causes the water to bend towards the pipe. Simple. Now I don't know about you guys, but I need the toilet. So I'll see you next time. Two sides of the DNA molecule that help to hold it together. So hydrogen bonds occur whenever you have a slightly, partially positive, covalently bonded hydrogen in one molecule that's attracted to, which is going to be attracted to, a slightly negatively charged area in another molecule. So remember the law of electrostatic attraction and repulsion, or Coulomb's law for you chemistry nerds. Like charges repel one another, so positive charges repel each other, so protons repel each other, negative charges repel one another, electrons repel one another, but oppositely charged particles attract. So in this image, what we see are, oops, different color. There's one polar covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen. There's another that gives us an area of partial negative charge. And then we've got an area of partial positive charge on our other, on another water molecule. And the way that we show hydrogen bonds, right? Remember I said in the last lecture that covalent bonds are shown with a, a dash. When you have um, a solid, a solid dash, when you have a dashed line between two areas of a large molecule or between two molecules, that's how we represent a hydrogen bond, right? And that the fact that the line is dashed, it's usually a lot longer as well, is reflective of how much weaker these attractions are. How it takes less energy to break them because they're not, that force of attraction is not individually very strong. So there's our hydrogen bond. That's the result of the partial negative charges. Somehow we've got to get another partial negative charge around that oxygen there. Okay. So this is a good sort of summary graph, at least the, the image is. Hydrogen bonds um, are stronger than other kinds of interactions that occur between molecules, but hydrogen bonds are a lot weaker than covalent bonds are. So hydrogen bonds are the weakest attractions we've talked about thus far, and they occur between different molecules or between different areas of the same molecule. Weak electrostatic attraction. The intramolecular forces that we've talked about are ionic bonds, 
and the two types of covalent bonds. When, you know, a lot of times in um, biology classes, you read covalent bonds are the strongest type of bond. Well, that's actually not true. I mean, it, it's true in living systems because of water special properties, which we're going to talk about in the last little bit of our chemistry lecture next time. Um, but in the absence of water, ionic bonds are stronger. All right, so let's think about a question just to see if we're all on the same page. If we were together, I would be working through this with you guys to make sure you had the idea of a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonds most likely to form between a polar covalent molecule and a nonpolar covalent molecule, two polar covalent molecules, or two nonpolar covalent molecules. The easiest way for me to think through problems like this is to try to make a drawing of some kind to sort of put my thinking out there. Um, and I would encourage you guys to do that as well. So if I think about it for a second, a polar covalent molecule is a molecule like water, I'll use blue for water, um, that has areas of partial charge. So there's my oxygen and my two hydrogens. So I've got slightly positive areas by the hydrogens, slightly negative areas by the oxygen. A nonpolar molecule, or a molecule made with nonpolar covalent bonds, like hydrogen bound to hydrogen, the electrons are shared equally and there are no areas of partial charge. So are these two going to be attracted to each other? Nope. Right, and this is why nonpolar molecules don't dissolve in water. Things dissolving is a function of interacting with the partial, partially charged areas in the water molecule. So Remember, and by definition, a hydrogen bond is based on electrostatic attraction. So, two polar covalent molecules. All right, so if I have two areas of partial charge and two areas of negative charge in my water molecule, I'm trying to make this faster. Um, if I have another water molecule around, it's not going to interact randomly with this water molecule, right? I mean, if, because let's say we have liquid water. If I've got the oxygen side of my water molecule, these two are gonna repel one another. That's gonna push away. It's not that it's not gonna, they won't bounce into one another, but then they're, in addition to the sort of bouncing off that you would get anyway, it's gonna get pushed additionally by that electrostatic repulsion. So my water molecules are always going to interact with each other. They're gonna form hydrogen bonds between the partially negative areas of one water molecule and the partially positive areas of a different one. So this sounds good so far. Two polar, nonpolar covalent molecules like we have here. Well, there are interaction, different kinds of interactions that happen be between nonpolar molecules. Um, we're not going to talk about them in this class at all. Um, and in any case, it's not a hydrogen bond, my friends. All right, next time, the special properties of water. It's hard to believe, but water is weird. <laughs>